Во наредните минути имаме интервју со американската амбасадорка во земинување Кейт Брнс. Ваша екселенција, ви благодарам многу што двоевте време и дојдовте во телевизија Телма на ова интервју. Наскоро заминувате од Македонија по тригодишниот мандат. Какви са вашите впечатоци? Во вашето прво интервју, кога дојдовте овде, нарековте дека имате три приоритети, па ке се обидам да ги цитирам да ја промовирате стабилноста преку силни институции да продолжите да ги поддржувате напорите на владата за реформите, за зајакнување на владеењето на правото, а, преку програмите за помош да бидете посветена на поддршката за напредок од како и преку а, партнерство во приватниот сектор и зголемување на безбедноста преку соработката во областа на одбраната. А, три години потоа, како сте задоволни со исполнувањето на овие ваши цели? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the program and giving me the opportunity to look back uh, at these three years. Um, and I would say, you know, my de deepest impression is, first of all, that this is a very different country than when mm -hmm. I arrived here three years ago. Um, it is uh, a country that is in a much better place in many respects. It's a more resilient country, and it is one that has the potential to play a very important part of being a vibrant, productive Europe. Um, you know, I'm proud of the progress that we've made uh, to see this country advance in so many respects, to become a full member of the NATO alliance, to begin its EU accession process, to make substantial gains in strengthening its democratic institutions and instilling a culture of rule of law here within those institutions, and more importantly, among the people and the citizenry and the responsibility for that. We've seen opportunities and successes in bringing uh, new investments and new innovation into the country and ways to reattract back the talent uh, in many respects. It'll be such a key part of this country moving forward. So I think what's impressed me most is the resilience of the people here, the will, the focus, that constant ability to maintain focus on, on your future as part of Europe, fully embedded and integrated into your Atlantic institutions. And I'm proud of the fact that through the work of the U.S. Embassy, we've played a small role in that. Um, you know, you, thank you for reminding me of those three goals that I set out when I came here. And I think we've achieved a lot in each one of them. As I mentioned in the rule of law area, we've done great work with the institutions of this country, uh, improving the efficiency of the judicial system through courtroom procedures. Um, we have uh, worked with the government on some of its strategic plans. We've worked and partnered with civil society, with chambers of commerce. We've supported youth groups. Um, and all of these efforts have helped strengthen not only the democratic institutions, um, but also the potential for economic prosperity. And I would say on the security front, we've also seen tremendous partnership, which all of which we were able to encapsulate in the strategic dialogue last June, which is going to be an excellent framework for continuing that cooperation moving forward. <laughs> Што сте разочарани? Која цел сметате дека најтешко била остварлива не по ваша вина, туку може би поради некои други околности? So I think, you know, among all of these uh, these goals, they're all tied to the future of this country as a resilient, strong, multi-ethnic democracy that is prospering, that is able to take advantage of new economic opportunities. And one of the fundamental challenges um, to all of that is the issue of corruption, which is why President Biden uh, has identified it, even in the United States, as a national security challenge for ourselves. Well, it's a national security challenge for countries around the world, and that's also true here in North Macedonia, because it is such a complex and systemic issue. So that's been one of the biggest challenges, um, but also, as I said, one of the areas where our partnership has been most focused. I think for me, the biggest frustration um, uh, during the time here has been that just at the moment when we have seen U.S. and Europe come back together to mm -hmm. help each other, to stand together, to step out of the global pandemic, uh, to address the economic problems that were associated with COVID, to tackle the increasing problems of climate change, which are more urgent now than ever, and to start to build that future of democracies and rule of law that we all care so deeply about. We've seen Russia take these actions to once again invade Ukraine, attack the homeland and its people, but also threaten all of those things that we've fought so hard for. So um, I'm, I'm not dissuaded by this. My government is not dissuaded by this, and our partner shouldn't be dissuaded by this. But it is frustrating to see those challenges emerge just as the moment when we're putting in place what we need to tackle those other challenges together. Во контекст на борбата против корупција пред неколку дена дадовте јасна порака, еве кажавте дека се надевате дека лидерите на политичката структура ќе сватат 
колку е критично да се променат системите и мрежите кои дозволуваат корупцијата да предизвика штета. Може ли да ни кажете што мислите со оваа порака, мал се повеќе да ни да ни објаснете оваа порака? I think when it comes to fighting corruption, you have to look at it as a whole of society and whole of government approach. So every single part of the structure here is responsible for fighting corruption and making sure that the institutions that exist here are resilient enough that they can push out corruption when they see it or leave no openings for it to sink in. Um, obviously, much of this is up to the institutions, uh, to the authorities that are responsible for governing those institutions and for the people who work in those institutions. But institutions don't reform themselves. Uh, it takes individuals, it takes political courage, it takes political will to make those changes happen. And I think that the political leadership understands these issues. Certainly, um, if they're listening to the polls and the citizenry, they understand that for the citizens, this is the most important challenge. But it is not enough to simply pass a law or create one solution mm -hmm. or one program. You have to approach this from all angles. And again, this is why President Biden pulled this theme out into a national security strategy and committed not only to fighting corruption in our own country, but partnering with those countries, those allies and partners that we care deeply about to help them also tackle corruption, which is systemic. It's networked. It's uh, it's a complex process. And it is something that you can't just fix one day and then be fine the next. Um, you have to keep at it and you have to make sure that all of your processes and, and systems continue to weed out those opportunities for corruption. Закон за демократија и просперитет на Западниот Балкан, овој закон или за сега предлог треба да обезбеди околу 4 милијарди долари во надлежност на државниот секретар на САД за реализација на петгодишниот сеопфатен стратешки план на Вашингтон за економски развој и демократска одржливост на регионот. А, сметате ли дека овие пари ќе помогнат во созбивање на корупцијата и во Македонија? Особено политичката, бидејќи со овој план треба да се обезбеди поддршка за борба против политичката корупција, особено во финансирањето на кампањите и за јакнување на регулаторниот и законодавниот надзор на критичните области на управувањето, како што се слободата на информирањето и јавните набавки. So this Western Balkans Democracy and Prosperity mm -hmm. Act that you mentioned is a proposal from the U.S. Senate. And as you said, it is a continuation of that investment that we have been making here for a long time. And it has at its heart the importance of strengthening democratic institutions and increasing economic opportunities, work that we've been partnering together with North Macedonia mm -hmm. on now for several decades. Um, but what it recognizes is that that this is a really difficult problem and that you have to attack it from a number of different uh, perspectives. Um, and illicit money or shady money or unclear money can be one of these corrosive factors that President Biden talked about that undermines not just the institutions, but it also creates disincentives for economic growth. Um, and it disillusions the citizenry, especially the youth who expect more from their institutions and from their government so that it serves them. So one of the goals of not just this mm -hmm. act, but of our programs in general is to help our partners here under their leadership and under their direction put in place the kind of structures that keep, let's say, nefarious kind of investments out of the system, keep it transparent so the public knows where investments are being made and how decisions about investments are being made so they can access that information. So the media mm -hmm. can track what's happening and the average citizen can look and see and make their own judgments about what is right. And a lot of this is work that can be done through sharing of best practices and regulatory frameworks. Much of this work is also very consistent with the kinds of reforms that North Macedonia is already undertaking as part of its EU accession process. So it's in alignment um, and, it's, and it's consistent with that approach with the overall objective that the economy should benefit everybody, that the kinds of investments that are made in this country shouldn't be to the benefit of one or two individuals or one or two companies, but really help create a strong economy in which all of the citizens can ultimately benefit. Меѓутоа, како стратешки партнер САД и досега има потрошено многу пари, особено во овие области за борба против корупција, но за жал нема подобрување. Верувате ли дека сега ќе може да се смени нешто? Well, I think it is important that the media is being uh, playing the role of being a watchdog and, and, mm. and providing scrutiny for all of these decisions. And so that's a positive development, and it's actually a sign of vibrant democracy here in North Macedonia. 
But I would say that since my job has been for the last three years to sort of step back and see the bigger picture, we have really seen some progress through a number of our programs which are targeted at specific issues. Mm -hmm. I cited the judiciary, for example, in terms of courtroom di digitalization that has made the judicial process not only more transparent, but also more efficient. Um, the process of providing to support to government ministries for putting their revenues and resources online, for opening things up so that citizens can track how decisions are being made, how money is being spent. We've worked with the police to modernize their forces. We've worked with organizations like the Judiciary Media Council, the State uh, Commission for the uh, Prevention of Corruption, to help them all provide this institutional watchdog role that's very important. And I think we've seen those actors step up. I think one of the most important areas where we've seen improvements, of course, is in strong civil society partners who are actively working with and challenging the government as appropriate to make sure that these actions are serving citizens' interests. So we have seen a return mm -hmm. on our investment. And, you know, when we make investments in a country, we do so with our eyes wide open. We certainly know what the challenges are and we see the challenges, but we're continuing to make that investment because we believe there is the will to make success on what, again, is a really, really hard set of challenges, not just throughout the region, throughout Europe, even in our own country. So it's complicated. But I do think that by bringing our partnership to bear, uh, and maybe some additional resources, we can get at this problem set. Now, it's not finances that are going mm -hmm. to solve the problem, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's will, political will, individual will, institutional will, um, and it's in its support across all political parties um, and across all parts of society that are going to make this happen. But I do think that there are ways by targeting these programs that we can help get at this problem, and that's to our mutual benefit. Суспендирана е главната шефица на обвинителството за борба против корупција и организиран криминал Вилма Русковска. Таа се обрати до американската амбасадорка затоа што таа вршеше истрага во управата за финансиска полиција. А во обракањето до амбасадата бараше да реагирате на притисуците кои таа ги има од директорот на финансиската полиција. А, граѓаните ја губат и доверувата во институциите. А, дали верувате дека ова прашање ќе се реши во интерес на правдата, на соодветен начин, и дека нема да има притисоци од а, политички авторитети а, во овој случај? I can't speak to individual cases, yeah. as I'm sure you understand. Um, but I will say, as some, you know, as someone who represents your, your partner when it comes to rule of law efforts, and since our country has invested in rule of law efforts here, that as a matter of principle, we do believe that every case and investigation should be adjudicated based on the merits of that particular case investigation. We wouldn't get out in front of it. And I think it is important to reiterate, again, as a matter of principle, the justice sector should be independent mm -hmm of any political or other outside influence. It should be free from that kind of intervention. And that's what the citizens demand when they talk about equality for all and fairness and justice. Во јуни Сати Македонија има заедничка изјава за стратешки а, диалог и во оваа смисла има и амандман на, на Законот за национална одбрана, односно Конгресот повара од Пентагон да предложи повеќе воени вежби во Македонија следната година. За ова имаме само вест сега, немам повеќе детали. Имате ли детали вие за конкретни активности во Македонија на безбедноста на план? So the strategic dialogue that, that you mentioned, again, that covered all aspects mm -hmm. of our relationship, but certainly the security and defense partnership was a big part of that because it's an area in which we've had tremendous cooperation with our partners here in North Macedonia. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we have seen as we have uh, stood by you in your process to joining NATO, seeing this country transform uh, its military forces and, it, and its structures to be part of NATO in a very rapid way um, and to bring online the beginnings of a very modern uh, army and defense force. Um, and the credit uh, goes to the Ministry of Defense for, for leading that effort um, in conjunction with, it, with NATO and with NATO instructions, um, but we've been proud to be a partner in that. They've also taken uh, a real effort to look at the Krivilak training area and convert it into what has become a world-class world training uh, training opportunity. 
Um, and we've had a number of U.S. forces who've been in Europe who've been able to participate in exercises both bilaterally and multilaterally um, with the Army of North Macedonia at Krevelak Training Area. And they have attested to the fact that this is a unique capability that North Macedonia is providing to the alliance. So I'm confident that you're not only going to see U.S. forces continue to participate in these kinds of activities, but also to increase their participation. And these activities are important. We saw that in the swift response exercise in May, um, and it's certainly become clear since Russia has reinvaded Ukraine how important it is that our NATO alliance is as strong as it is. And it's stronger now because North Macedonia is in it, um, and now we see Sweden and Finland also wanting to join the organization and to be part of that. What these exercises do is ensure that our forces are, are interoperable, that they can work side by side and fight shoulder to shoulder if needed to defend our homelands. Uh, and it's a powerful thing to see and to be part of. Uh, and for North Macedonia to host those exercises, a true contribution to the alliance, because we are going to need to show that resolve, um, uh, not only in the months and years ahead, but for the long-term security of, of our countries. And again, I think it's been, it's been really uh, special for me to, to see that relationship not only develop, but to see North Macedonia now taking that leadership in offering its capabilities to the lines. Makedonija često pati na udar na a, lažni vesti i hibridni napadi, osobeno po napadite na Rusija nad Ukrajina. Do sega ne vidovme konkreten slučaj od kada doagjaat ovije napadi, barem nema ništo a, vo javnosta za ova. A, kako sad ke pomogne na ovoj plan a, za da može Makedonija da se odbrani od vakvi a, hibridni napadi? So fake news um, and these kind of hybrid attacks that you refer to are unfortunately something that we are now all facing, um, not just here in North Macedonia or in the Western Balkans, but even in the United States. Um, and it is important that we pull together uh, and share our experiences, um, first and foremost, but also our best practices in dealing with this and identifying the actors and figuring out how things are going on. We can also do a lot through cooperation, uh, and that cooperation includes how best to strengthen our systems, um, both internally, but more importantly, how best to strengthen our institutions so they are protected, so they are not vulnerable mm -hmm. from these kinds of attacks, and more importantly, so that our citizenry is not vulnerable to what they are reading or seeing in the fake news without challenge. Um, part of that is investing in uh, strong and independent media, um, and you know that is something that we have seen play an extremely important role in North Macedonia in terms of challenging some of the narratives that are out there. Um, we have also worked a lot on media literacy and strengthening analytical skills, especially for young people. We have a program with USAID called You Think that targets directly this issue. And our American corners throughout the countries also work on youth resilience so that people have the skills to challenge what they're seeing and to learn more. Uh, there's a lot that North Macedonia can do, not only in partnership with us, but in partnership with its other, uh, its other partners in Europe and in the region. And most importantly, with the OSCE chairmanship next year, North Macedonia has an opportunity uh, to lead the way for us to, as a global community, come up with some of the solutions to all of these challenges that our citizenry is facing. But once again, you know, the, one of the key remedies here is transparency. The more transparent we are with our publics, the more they're going to be able to find the truth and challenge uh, those that seek to, to distort the truth or to represent some other kind of information. Energetskata kriza nasproti obnovljivite izvori za energije jedne od klučnite temi, ne samo kaj nas, tukaj i v svetu. Nacionalen interes na sate namalovanje na zavisnosti na Zapaden Balkan od izporakata na ruski od gas i fosilnite goriva. Međutoa, spored mene, dolgi godini Makedonija ne napravila mnogo v investicijite na obnovljivi izvori za da je nadmina energetskata kriza. Kako sad bi pomognala na ovoj plan? So once again, North Macedonia is not alone in facing this challenge. As you noted, we have talked about the importance of getting off of energy mm. dependence on single sources for some time now uh, and has been a strategic priority um, uh, in our own country. It's also been a strategic priority here, but it's a hard thing to do. Uh, and what we have now learned, unfortunately, again, because of Russia's war of choice, frankly, in Ukraine, and their use and wielding of energy now as a weapon um, has forced people to now confront the, this, this issue of energy dependence in a much more critical and timely way. The same way that 
the climate crisis has forced us to relook at energy sources and recognize that we have got to move to renewable energy if we want to have a sustainable future. So both of these things are now driving political decisions that under normal circumstances are very hard to do. It is hard to transition um, when you have, uh, you know, an, uh, a system that's based on fossil fuels and without a lot of resources here. So uh, I think that uh, political um, developments are going to force some of these decisions and it will also enable some of our work to continue on some of the local solutions that have been in place in a long time. For example, the interconnector with Greece, which will bring new fuel here and new opportunities for LNG, including from other sources, the United States, but many other sources as well. Um, and then I think in addition to all of that, it's important to note that we recognize this is a, is a, a common problem. And uh, as far back as March of this year, President Biden announced that we would be joining the European Commission in a U.S.-European energy Energy Task Force, recognizing that this problem of energy security uh, of our community mm -hmm. is one of strategic inter uh, interest to each of us as individual countries. So we are now invested in the energy security of Europe, and we're looking at ways that we can help each other as partners get through not only the next three, four, or five months of what will be, I think, a difficult winter, but over the longer term challenges of making sure that we are able to fully transition away uh, from reliance on a single source uh, of energy and help manage the transition to renewables, which is becoming uh, something that we simply have to do. Остануваат уште неколку дена во Македонија, со какви впечатоци приватно се заминувате од оваа земја? Uh, видовме дека правевте и ајвар минатата година во вашата резиденција, любите сте на нашите планини, ги посетивте нашите uh, менастари. Какви се вашите впечатоци? Well, thank you for that question. I mean, as you noted, we've been blessed in three years here to have so many different experiences, and we're going to have such wonderful memories when we leave this country. But as I, you know, as I think about this, and as one does when they come to sort of the end of one's mandate, you know, I think how lucky we are that we weren't just observers um, mm. as we went to these different parts of the country or we had these different experiences. We were invited um, and we had colleagues from the embassy and friends from the community who, for example, taught us how to make Ivar or who <laughs> shared their recipe for Sarma with us or their special formula for Rocky. We never got around <laughs> to making that. You know, we met folks out in the countryside, um, uh, agricultural producers, wine producers who explained to us why the wines and the fruit and the vegetables and the cheese here taste so incredibly good. Um, we met a lot of outdoor enthusiasts who actually opened this country up for us to explore, climbers and hikers mm. who showed us the mountains and the hiking trails and the rock walls. We met um, fishermen and divers and kayakers who showed us your rivers and lakes. We met um, artists and sculptors and our archaeologists who helped us discover sort of not just the only the ancient uh, heritage of this country, but also the more modern contributions that you've had, the musicians. And they really opened our eyes and, and helped tell the story through us. So it's that combination of uh, richness and diversity, but also openness and generosity, the willingness of the people here, not only to, to, to let us look and see what they have, but to be part of it, to, to help us grab their enthusiasm and their interest in preserving this country and their potential for ecotourism or, or you know, sports adventure opportunities that really open things up for us. So I'm really grateful um, that we were so wonderfully, warmly welcomed here in this country and that we were able to see not every corner of it. I regret we didn't make it to every single town that we had hoped to, but we really were able to see such a broad, uh, broad, display of this country's great uh, great treasure and that really is your greatest treasure is the people who who live here. Сепак дали се разочарувавте некогаш од негрижата за природата или ниското ниво на еколошка свест во Македонија? So I was really lucky that a lot of these people I talked about of all generations mm -hmm. by the way are huge nature lovers um, but especially these young people. They are fired up. They are energized and they are going to make sure that we all fight for the environment and you know just like back in the United States here in North Macedonia they're going to make sure that we recognize that this is a treasure and invest in it because they really do love this place. Um, and I think we all have to wake up to it as we, we can't afford uh, not to not to protect this environment that means so much to us and to sustain it for our future use. So I have hope there too. Vaša Excelencija, vi blagodaram mnogo za možnost za interview. Thank you so much.